Push dose epi is becoming more and more prevalent in the EMS and for good reason. Let's talk about those reasons and then explain how you can make push dose epi on your rig. In this awesome GEMS article, doctors Breyer and Hodridge talk about push dose epinephrine and they make a push for it in the pre-hospital setting. There's a lot of fantastic reasons for us to use it in the pre-hospital setting and they describe a lot of them right here. Okay, let's just break it down into simple facts and then we'll move on to how we actually do it. All right. So first off, dopamine, that's kind of the traditional vasopressor that we use in the pre-hospital setting. All right. So here, let's compare it to push dose epinephrine. The math on dopamine, five to ten micro or five to twenty micrograms per kilogram per minute. Then we've got our sixty drip set, a sixteen to hundred to one concentration. It's terrible. It's miserable. It's the bane of all paramedic students worldwide. It's not good. All right, we can't do all that math in our heads, and it just sits there and it takes forever. It's terrible. Push dose epi, on the other hand, very easy. It's based on tens. And it's very, very easy to do, and we'll talk about it here in a second. Accuracy, again, accuracy, the math first off is the problem. Secondly, we have gravity drips that we're trying to manage with the dopamine. We're not actually getting our true you know, calculated numbers, so what's almost the point of doing the calculations, right? It's just not good and it's not very accurate. And then a lot of people back in the day used to just crank it open until they get a blood pressure and then kind of titrate it back down. And that's not appropriate either. All right, we're not falling within that five to 20 range. So it's not good, it's not accurate. Whereas giving small little aliquots of epinephrine, very accurate, and with that syringe, we can see exactly how much we've gotten. So much more accurate. Speed-wise, again, let's talk about that math. It's terrible, super, super slow, setting it up, mixing, figuring out which bag and all that stuff. It's not good, it's hard. Push dose empty, again, very fast. That's why this is a great agent to be using if you're trying to set up one of those drips for some other reason and you need to just kind of temporarily keep that patient's blood pressure up, all right? Now, outcomes. Dopamine has actually been shown to have worse outcomes as a vasopressor in most pre-hospital kind of shock stuff uh, than epinephrine, right? So epinephrine, it does a great job of kind of just giving a nice little bump in your alpha, your beta one, your beta two, it does a great job with all that stuff, right? Um, however, with dopamine, there's a high risk of, of all kinds of arrhythmias. There's a high risk of causing end organ failure. It's not good. It's a terrible medication. And there's a reason we're seeing it slowly go away in the pre-hospital setting. We don't even have it in my system anymore because of that. It's just not a good drug and it's very specific in what uses it's good for. Okay, let's talk about indications. So just as any other vasopressor, we would give this in shock after, so status post, what a terrible P, status post fluid resuscitation. All right, so I know that in trauma, you should be giving whole blood. I know that in you know burns or in sepsis, we should be giving lactate readers. We're not gonna talk about what fluids, but if you've given fluids and you've given them appropriately and you still have a very shocky patient, okay? At that point, that's when we need to consider phase suppressors. all right? And that's when push dose epinephrine will be great. On top of that, uh, when we go to do an RSI on a patient, RSI medications drop patient's blood pressures. All right, so we can give this just before RSI to help to keep that blood pressure up as we're giving those paralytics that are gonna drop those, those blood pressures, right? So if you have an unstable patient and you're managing their airway, this is a great way to do that, okay? All right, now let's talk about our doses. Our dose, you might recommend, uh, recognize this, five to 20, just like your dopamine drip, right? But instead of five to 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute, it's just micrograms per minute. Super easy. We're taking the weight base, the hard part out of this, right? 
Okay, now the other part with dopamine that's really hard is that whole 16 to 1 concentration, right? Or 1600 to 1 concentration. Let's make it super easy. Let's use a 10 microgram per ml concentration. Now, with that super easy concentration of 10, I like 10s. I've got 10 fingers, I have 10 toes. It's easy to move decimal places, right? It's very easy with 10s. All we have to do if we're using 5 to 20 micrograms uh, per minute and we have 10 micrograms per ml, that's 0.5 to 2.0 milliliters per minute. Incredibly, incredibly easy, right? Now let's talk about a little bit of the, the mechanisms of action, okay? We have a one minute onset and then five to 10 minute duration. So quick on, so we're gonna be able to see if our epinephrine's doing good for us, right? Just set your blood pressure cuff to continue to go off every single minute, every two minutes, and just monitor it as you're going up, okay? And then that way you know how much more to be giving, all right? Very easy, very easy to work with, okay? All right. Let's talk about how we can actually assemble this, right? So we have our cardiac epi, which is one milligram in 10 mLs, okay? We have to dilute it to one milligram in 100 mLs. All right, so a couple ways to do that. First off, we take our one milligram in 10 mL, and we draw out one mL of it. 1 ml of it is also the same as 0 0.1 milligram. That's very easy, right? So 0 0.1 milligram. So 10, excuse me, 100 micrograms drawn into this 10 mLs, that makes 10 microgram per ml, which is exactly the concentration we just talked about. We need 10 microgram per ml. All right, so perfect. We have one milligram in there, and then we draw out 9 ml of normal saline into that same syringe. All right, now we have a total of not, excuse me, we have a total of 10 ml in here with 0 0.1 milligram. So 10 ml, 0 0.1 milligram, that is the equivalent of 10 micrograms per ml. Super easy. So all we're doing is we're drawing out of a cardiac epi, one ml, and then drawing nine ml out of our saline bag. Incredibly easy to do. Okay, another way you can do is take a 10 ml flush and you squirt one ml on the floor. So now we have a total of nine mls in our saline flush, all right? And then we just draw one ml of the epinephrine. It's the same exact way to get to that 10 microgram per uh, ml concentration, right? Okay, the only difference here on this one is, is that this way I'm drawing the medication first. I like this way a little bit better because when you're drawing the medication first, if you overdraw or you underdraw, you'll be able to adjust that, right? Whereas this way, if you're drawing the medication after, if you overdraw, you can't just push it back in because it's already started to mix, all right? So it's not quite as easy, but it's still, we have a wide range, five to 20 micrograms. So some people are a little bit more okay with this. I personally prefer the first one, all right? Now the other way too is you can take your preload that you already have and you squirt, uh, this is of epi, so you have 10 ml of epi, and this is cardiac epi, all right, or one to 10,000 as some people still call it, um, and you actually squirt out nine ml. So now you have left one ml. So we still have, we're doing the same exact thing, we're getting our one ml, or like we're looking at here, one ml, so we're looking for that one milliliter of that cardiac epi in whichever way that we're doing this, okay? And then the, all we have to do is hook up to the line. You can just use your lure lock, hook up to the line, and pull out nine mLs of saline 
right into the same exact um, uh, cardiac epi ampule or excuse me, vial that you are already using, right? Now with any of these, you should be labeling them, all right? You should be labeling them. There might be confusion if the patient cores and you now have a patient with in cardiac arrest and you've got this cardiac epi here. Was this the one that I'm pre-mixed? Is this the one that I, you should always have a Sharpie on your rig, just write really fast on the outside of it. Okay, now I have, you know, you can just write push dose epi or you can write, you know, a 10 microgram per ml or 100 milligram epi on the outside, or actually microgram epi, however you want to write that, okay? All right. Now, one last way that you can do this, and this one's a little bit more complicated, but if you're gonna end up setting an epi drip up anyways, it kind of actually makes a little bit of sense, okay? You have your 100 ml bag, you draw and waste 10 mls. So that means there's 90 milliliters left in that bag, all right? Then we push all 10, We push all 10 of this back into the bag. Now we're back to 100 mLs, and we have a milligram of epi in 100 mLs, which comes down to the same exact concentration we were just talking about beforehand, okay? Then all you have to do is draw 10 mLs out of the bag. And when you do that, you have the exact same concentration we did beforehand. Now you'll be able to draw multiple doses out of it, okay? Again, you need to mark this bag. And then when you go to set up the patient on a drip, if you're doing an epinephrine drip, it's already set up with that concentration and you can just go ahead and set it up and continue it. The math is already consistent and everything, okay? All right, so if you guys liked these videos, please follow us at Master Your Medics. Go to masteryourmedics.com. All right. This was produced in conjunction with GEMS. Uh, we appreciate them and it's been a great collaboration. If you guys need anything else from us, please follow and please.